If you're serious about finding gold, I'm gonna give you the apps and the websites necessary that will make it so much easier for you to get out there and find it on your first try. So let's get into it. Now don't worry about having to write down all of these websites and apps because I'm gonna leave links to everything down below. Now the cool thing about all the websites and the apps I'm about to give you can be used to find either load or plaster deposit. That's the cool thing about it. Now keep in mind, in order to find gold, you gotta go where it's already been found before unless you're a seasoned pro at geology and finding gold deposits. But for most people out there, it's just simpler to go where it's already been found and start prospecting in those known gold areas. And of course, some of these apps will even show you where the mining claims are at, the maps and the boundary lines. I got some beautiful limestone outcrops. You see that? Limestone is a perfect place to host caves. We might go take a look up there and see if there's anything hiding. Yeah, I know, enough jaw jacking, Jeff. Get on with these websites and apps. We wanna know how to find gold. All right, geez, you guys are a tough crowd. So you always hear me talking about the USGS reports. So I'm gonna cover those first, but I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail because a lot of you guys write and say, Jeff, you just said a USGS report. How the heck do I use that? to find gold deposits. It's really simple. The first one is the USGS Mineral Deposit Database. Now, the cool thing about this database is it's got over 230,000 listings of gold mines, gold deposits. And the cool thing about it is that it has not only inactive claims, but active claims as well. And you can search by commodity. So if you're into silver, you can search by silver. Me, I like gold. Now, when you use this in conjunction with the MRDS reports, it becomes a very powerful tool tool because you can look up the history of that area and sometimes there's footnotes in there that'll tell you where the gold deposits were found, the type of material they were found in, and how much they pulled out. And sometimes if you're really lucky they'll tell you the grade. Now I'm not saying all that information is going to be in there for every mine, but it is going to be in there. Now the next one is the USGS Mineral Catalog Database. Now the cool thing about this is it has an interactive map on it. It's so cool because you can scroll through the map and find out, oh, this is the area that I want to check out. And then that way it can tell you the mineral deposits there. It's a really cool feature. And the cool thing about that one is that you can download GIS information that will overlay onto Google Earth and Google Maps. See how cool that is? We use it all the time to put overlays on when we're trying to find areas that produce gold, especially with the geological maps. Oh, look at all these. Oh, wow, look at, look at all these trumpet plants all over the place. That means heavy mineralization right here. I'm gonna have to prospect. Oh, somebody was prospecting. Right here, you see it? They dug a hole right here. <laughs> Even when I'm not looking for mineral deposits, I find them. I'm gonna have to mark this on the map and come back and sample it. <laughs> so anyway, another good one is BLM's MRDS reports. Now, this is good because you need to know where you can go prospecting. And this is a valuable site because it can tell you land status and PLSS systems, all this stuff you need to know when you're out looking for land that you can actually prospect or file a mineral claim on. Now, sometimes that can get a little complicated. So I always advocate using a website called My Land Matters. Now I've done extensive videos on My Land Matters and I'll leave a link down below so I don't bore you to tears. But that video will show you exclusively in great detail how to use My Land Matters effectively so you know exactly what land is available, what land is not available, and where you can prospect, what mines were active, and the commodities they were chasing. It's kind of like all these other websites rolled up into one. Isn't that cool? So I'll leave a link for that down below too. Now the cool thing with technology is now they have all these different apps you can put on your phone so you can use them in the field, even if you don't have cell phone service. Isn't that cool? And one of the ones that you can use that's pretty cool is called Geology Toolkit. This one's really cool because it gives you GPS, and it gives you maps, offline maps too, and it gives you geology tips and tricks, and it'll actually give you coordinates onto certain locations, even if you don't have cell phone service. Now here's a site that's even better and it's gonna blow your mind, and that is Onyx Hunting App. Now I know you're thinking, Jeff, 
that's an app for hunters. Why the heck would prospectors want to use that? Because this thing is so accurate, even surveyors use it. And you can find out all kinds of background information on whoever owns that land and the exact boundary lines too. And the cool part about it is that it has topo maps, satellite imagery, and with that information, you can see exactly where the boundary lines are for people's claims. All that information is in there and it'll tell you even who the claim owner is. Is. isn't that cool and we use it all the time if we're looking for somebody's claim because we need to know exactly where the boundary lines are so if we need to file a claim we can do that too and this is especially important for you guys back east where there's hardly any BLM land and you need to get a hold of the landowner to try to get permission you can go ahead and look this information up right there on the spot because a lot of this stuff can be done without signal offline isn't that the cool part about it and yes I know the better version you have to pay for but trust me it's worth it wow look at the size of that piece of sandstone now that is a big monker take a look at that thing and then of course right next to it is what limestone oh there goes my glasses there goes my glasses i know i gotta figure out a better way to hold on to those glasses huh all right now speaking of rocks i get a lot of questions every day about jeff i found this unusual rock I don't know what it is. Is there any gold in it? <laughs> well, of course I do my best to identify it using a photo, but of course there's nothing better than being there in person and able to actually break off a sample, clean it, and then use your, your hand lens, which is this, it's not a whistle, to check it out. Now, if you happen to find some rocks and you don't know what they are, and you're like, gee, I can't get a hold of Jeff, what do I do? So if you come up on a rock that you're not sure of, you can go to a website called Rocked. It's fantastic because it's a community of people posting pictures of what they find out in the field. And there's even geologists there that can help consult with you if you have a question about something you found that you don't know what it is. And this is a good example right here. Look at that monker right there, huh? You see all the different bedding planes? See the small clast in there? You see that? They're angular and broken up. What kind of rock is that, huh? They do have a <laughs> they do have an app out there called Stone Identifier. They also make one called Rock Identifier. And I'll leave links down below. Now the cool thing about these apps is that you can use your phone to actually scan the rock that you're looking at. So for instance, if I pick this piece of rock up, which is a piece of limestone, and I put it in front of my camera with the app, and I scan it, it's gonna tell me it's a piece of limestone. And it's also gonna tell me the types of minerals that are in there, isn't that cool? And of course that's a pay app, but trust me, it's worth it. Because there's a lot of times you're in the field, and if you're not a seasoned geologist like myself, you come up on a rock, and you're like, gee, Jeff told me about this rock but I can't remember if this is the one that's associated with gold. All you gotta do is scan it, it'll tell you what it is, and then you'll know with a 90% certainty what it is. See how easy that is? Now I know it's not perfect, but it does help. Ooh, what is this? Oh, see that? See that? Somebody's been digging. And way out here in the middle of nowhere. Wow. That over there is the Wilson Thrust Fault. And then of course you have this sandstone outcropping, which is Aztec sandstone from 65 million years ago. Isn't that cool? You can actually find prehistoric fossils in that sandstone. In fact, we made a video about it. It looks like this. Look at this sandstone. See this rusty stuff right here? You know what that is? That's fossilized wood or petrified wood as they call it. Now that's probably around when the dinosaurs are walking around. See that? There's a piece there and there's a piece there. Now sandstone, it's got bedding planes to it. It does fracture really, really easy along those bedding planes. So there's just tons and tons of petrified wood stuck in between these bedding planes. And look at that. See this one that I cleaned off, this really big one? Look at that. That's a piece of fossilized wood. Isn't that cool? That right there is petrified wood that's about 180 to 190 million years old. Now you can use all the stuff I just told you and overlay it with geological maps of known gold mining districts. And that'll tell you if you're onto a win or not. All you gotta do is look for the different type of rock types, the contact zones, and if there's mines along those fault lines. You see how that works? It's really not that hard. In fact, we did it over an area around Good Springs and we found this gold deposit. You can see limestone, and then down here you can see the 
decomposing granite right here. See how soft that is? Right here, this is what the old timers were looking for. This, we tested, has gold in it. This is what they were chasing. Now, when we looked it up on the USGS report, we found out that this mine on the other side of this hill produced somewhere in the average range of two ounces per ton. But as you can see, the vein travels at a 45 degree angle. And then if you look up towards the contact zones here, right here, that's nothing but solid iron in there. Cause we're gonna take a rock drill and we're gonna drill into this, this uh, vein right here. And we're gonna sample in further because the gold we got was fine, some small little flakes in it. And I'm hoping the deeper we go, the bigger the pieces of gold we'll get. So. You want gold? You gotta earn it. I already see pieces of gold right there. Let's see if I can shake it down for you. Oh yeah, look at that. See all that? Not bad, huh? Look at that. Oh, now if that ain't beautiful, I don't know what is. There's some wire gold right there. I don't know if you can see that. But all the gold is in these little pockets like this in this. And there's lots and lots of it. And right here is another good example. You can see the limonite and you can see jerosite and plumble jerosite in there as well. And then, of course, you have these little halos of copper around these lenses. A lot of them have a tremendous amount of gold in them and some of them have nothing at all. So you have to sample them to find out which ones are the richest. Also, when you do find a large pocket, you'll see gold like this, which is crystalline gold in nature. Very rich. Oh, now look at that fish hook cactus. Isn't that cool? Don't touch them. Oh, what do you think that is, huh? I already know what it is, but do you know what it is? Hey, if you know what it is, leave me a comment down below. And then at the end of the video, I'll tell you what it is and we'll see how many people out there got it right. Look at that monker. Is that a big chunk of limestone or what? Let's go take a look at that thing. Look at that big old brecciated piece of limestone. Where do you think it came from? Hmm, up there, of course. Imagine that, it broke off and it rolled all the way down here. Imagine that, ooh, he's a big one. No caves, no box of silver coins. What's up with that? Con! Supposed to be a box of silver coins here. Ooh, ooh, that limestone will cut you to shreds too. And for you guys out there that don't know, most of your gold deposits, low gold, are not gonna be associated with limestone unless they're in a carbonate hosted deposit, which is usually disseminated like the Carlin trend, or if it's an intrusion related deposit where you have some type of igneous body thrusting its way up through the limestone, you can get scar deposits that way too. And by doing so, you can have gold deposits associated with that intrusion. Usually falls under the category of intrusion related deposits or polymetallic replacement deposits. Yeah, I know, it's a lot, just remember, Limestone's not really good at hosting gold deposits, mostly replacement deposits like lead, zinc, silver, and copper. Keep that in mind when you're out in the field. Now, if you guys don't know how to stake your own mining claim, I'll leave another link down below so you guys can watch that video. And it's got all kinds of detailed information on how to do it. Now, I can just hear it from here. Jeff, what if we don't want to go through all that? We just want to claim so we can go find gold. I got you covered, brother. Hold on. Hey, look at that. I got some burrows up here. I bet you they either recognize my hat or this gentle quiet soft voice of mine blah 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 blah, blah. a little asmr for you blah, 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 blah. yeah i know get on with it jeff and stop getting distracted with the wildlife yeah but it's so cool to be out here and see some wildlife now if you guys don't want to have to go through all of this craziness get yourself a good mining claim you know you can always buy one did you know that yes you can but i'm going to tell you the pros and cons so hold on while i whip this out oh wow Look at the size of that huge brecciated piece of limestone. Wow. See all the different size of class in it? Look at that. This used to be mud. And these are giant pieces of older limestone that got stuck in it. Oh, and then through a process of lithification, it became a solid mass. It's a monster, a monster. Neat thing about this old craggly limestone is that it's so easy to climb on because it, ah, it's razor sharp, but don't you dare fall on it. Oh, look what I found on the top. Now, isn't that cool? 
That's a fish hook barrel cactus. Now that's cool. All right, now getting back to mining claims. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave a list of reputable mining claim companies that sell either patent or unpatent mining claims down below. And that way you can go through it at your leisure and check. Now, I've got to tell you this because it's very important. Remember, there's a huge difference between patent and unpatent. And if you're not familiar with those phrases, I'm gonna give you a crash course on it, all right? So buckle up, baby, because it's about to get now, back in 1994, the Clinton administration officially got rid of the patent mining claim, which was basically a claim that once filed, the owner had exclusive rights, not only to the minerals, but to the land. You could build a house on it, put a fence around it. Basically, it was your land. The government being who they are, they decided that was too much land control. So they said, we're going to come up with unpatent mining claims. And all that gives you a right to is the minerals in the ground, nothing else. So what does that mean for unpatent claims? Well, unpatent patent mining claims are the most common that you're going to see out there for sale and once again you have no rights except for the minerals that you're mining out of the ground that's it so anybody and their uncle can come onto your claim and they can mess with it they can do anything they want and blm will not let you lock anything up if they see anything locked up they'll cut your lock i've seen it and i've had it happen to myself that includes load and placer and that sucks because if you need to keep your gear out there for whatever reason anybody can come onto there and steal it i'm more interested about all that right up there <laughs> because you never know if somebody hit something up there oh man it feels good out here it feels real good just you play that banjo boy last week it was 110 112 and now it's like 80 degrees out. Oh, it feels great. And speaking of which, did you guys see that windstorm we had here in Vegas? Ooh, it knocked down all kinds of power lines. It was crazy. I haven't seen anything like it. It looks something like this. Now that is a beautiful view, huh? Now, if you're gonna buy a claim, I highly recommend you get yourself a patent mining claim over an unpatent mining claim. Yeah, I know they cost more, but trust me in the long run, it's worth it because you can build a house on it, put a fence around it, and BLM can't mess with you. Isn't that cool? Now there's one more option I can give you that is what we use to get mining claims. And that is you wait till about a month or two after the filing fee deadline. And that is September 1st, okay? Now, if you own a mining claim, you should know that your maintenance fees or your small miner waiver is due by September 1st. So what do I do? I sit there about a month or two later and I comb over all the mining claims that I like based off of my research and I wait to see if they filed. If they didn't, I call BLM, find out if it's active or inactive. If it's inactive, boom, I file a claim. I have my paperwork ready and I'm ready to go. And I can tell you right now, I found some of my best claims doing just that. Now, if you guys use any other types of apps or websites to locate mining claims, mining districts, or places that have good placer or low deposits, go ahead and leave them down in the comments below because I'm sure we'd all love to read it so we can find some good land to prospect on too. And at the end of this month, we're gonna be giving away 10 bags of pay dirt. Now these aren't just regular bags of pay dirt like you see online, no. These are the richest bags of pay dirt you will see anywhere in the world, guaranteed. They look something like this.
And each bag of pay dirt comes with a one ounce silver bar. You can't beat that. Not only that, we're giving away a brand new Gold Monster 1000 metal detector as well. Now, if you want to get your hands on any of this stuff, just look for the little icon at the end of the video that looks something like that. Click on it, make a $10 pledge, and you instantly qualify to get your hands on any of that stuff. And you could talk to me directly. Isn't that cool? That way you don't need to get an app. That way you could just ask me your geology questions. And I'll see you on the next video.